welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I mean, Cracking the Cryptic is so busy at the moment. There's so much going on. Um, I spent the morning uh, going through the PDF uh, of the initial version of our brand new book, um, which which we've sent out to initial backers, I think, uh, as part of the proofreading process before we finalise the PDF and then print the book. But we are getting to the stage when the book is nearly ready, and it's it's just so cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's that's one of the tasks I've been doing today. Um, other things I've been looking at, I've been delighted. I've been reading the comments about our latest uh, Sudoku hunt, which is our patron reward for September. Do check that out if you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, it's it's called Lines and Shapes. There is a chance to win new merch. Let me show you the picture. Oh, in the wrong place, of course. Um, look, that's the, the CTC logo. Very, very discreet there in the middle of the cap, which I think looks quite cool. I, I should actually get one, shouldn't I, and <laughs> wear it. Um, yeah, the, the, that competition closes on the 20th. Um, and I should talk about today's puzzle, of course. This is called Collider. And this is by James Sinclair, who's basically so reliable in terms of production of world-class puzzles. I think James has appeared sort of once a week for the last few weeks. So certainly that's what it feels like to, to me. And every one of the puzzles is just, you know, it's just sublime. Um, testers have had a look at this one. They love it. This comes from James's... Um, subscription newsletter I think I think that's the way to describe it called artisanal Sudoku if I remember I'll put a link under the video um, so that you can check that out um, I, I think I think it's monthly but forgive me if I've got that wrong um, and anyway uh, some of his subscribers wrote to us and said you should definitely check out this puzzle by uh, by James and James was kind enough uh, to send it in to us. So that is exactly what we're going to do. It's it's as it looks. If, you, if you're familiar with Sudoku rules, there's no trickery in this grid, just a lot of 13 cages by the looks of it. But I'll read you the rules in a moment or two's time. Oh, and I've got no idea. I've got literally no idea how difficult this is. I did type in Collider space Logic Masters into Google and it came up with nothing. So there is no clue. You'll have to be guided by the length of the video. Um, other than the other than Patreon, what else do I need to tell you about? Line Sudoku, it, it, we're, yeah, we're nearly ready with our new app as well. Um, I've got some birthdays to do. I'm going to say a very happy birthday to Amy, who's turned 18 today. And your friend Aurora wrote to us, Amy, um, and she just wanted. I think I think you're both over in Switzerland, um, and Aurora wanted you to know wanted you to know how grateful she is for all for always being there for her, which is a rather lovely thought. So Amy, I hope you have a great day today. Great 18th birthday with chocolate cake, of course. Um, next, Alex. Alex has turned 26 over there in New Jersey. Um, your girlfriend, Julie, wrote to us. Now, I think I shouted out your name last year, Alex. And if I remember rightly, you're an Arsenal fan. Well, I won't hold that against you. Although Arsenal are riding high in the Premiership at the moment. Um, and you even gave, uh, I think Alex gave Julie uh, one of those stuffed sharks and Julie called it Simon, which is, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm being damned by faint praise there. Um, but anyway, Alex, have a brilliant birthday. I understand your sister Lily has also got into Sudoku and perhaps the channel, so maybe she will hear this message as well. Um, and finally, Mariska, I think it is, from your boyfriend Sam. Um, now, I'm late with this birthday. Your birthday was on the 1st of September, but this is not my fault. I'm always very delighted to read out birthdays that are not my fault when they're late. Um, I think Mariska, you, your friends call you Riz, and I hope you have a great day today with, with chocolate cake, with the correct amount of icing, which is of course in a one-to-one -one ratio, not a black dot ratio. We've got some black dots in the puzzle today. I will talk about those now. Um, and we will get to the rules of James James's puzzle. So this these are the rules to Collider. We've got normal Sudoku rules applying. So we've got to put the digits one to nine in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box once each. Uh, on each diagonal marked in blue, digits cannot repeat. So we've got a diagonal constraint today. So those digits there have to be the digits one to nine once each as well as these digits. Um, just, just for the record, some people call this this diagonal. I've just drawn in there. They call it the negative diagonal because if you were to um, if you were to plot it on a graph, it would have a negative gradient, whereas this has a positive gradient. Um, so, if I refer to the positive diagonal or the negative diagonal, that is what I mean. 
Uh, some cages show that some cages show their sums. Ah, yes, look at that. That's jolly naughty. This cage doesn't have a sum. How I didn't notice that. Um, okay, so that cage has no sums. So we don't know what it adds up, adds up to. Um, digits cannot repeat within a cage. So if this square here was a six, for example, that square there could not be a six because it would then repeat in the cage and that would be wrong. Um, a digit inside a white circle must appear in at least one of the four cells surrounding that circle. So we've only got two white circles. So one of those squares is a six. Uh, one of these squares is a one. and One of these squares is a two. Ah. Uh, Ah, okay, and let's just pause there. It says it does say it says in at least one of the four cells surrounding that circle. So this cage oh no, oh, I was about to say <laughs> this cage could be that configuration, but it can't because we can't repeat a digit in a cage. So there is only one one and only one two in that cage there. Um, and these clues are sometimes called quadruple clues, and they are they are they make for jolly fine puzzles in my experience. Uh, digits in cells with a shaded square must be even. So we have a plethora of those, five of those. Those squares all have to contain even digits. And digits in cells separated by a black dot have a one to two ratio, i.e. one digit is double the other. So if this square here was a two, this square here would either be a one because two is double one, or it would be a four because four is double two. So it's very simple. Um, and that's all the rules of the puzzle. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I can actually, oh, although can I? Oh, no, I can, I can see, I can see two things about this grid straight away, which I will immediately therefore mention. The first is that these four cells here contain different digits so they are the digits two four six and eight because they're all even um but they all see each other in inverted commas now what do i mean by see each other well let, let's imagine this square here was a two now if that square is a two can you put two in any of those three and the answer is clearly no because this can't be a two by just Sudoku, it's in the same row. This can't be a two, it's in the same column. And that can't be a two because it's on the same diagonal. So, and that logic obviously applies symmetrically which whichever one of these we start with. So these are four different digits and therefore I actually, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna shade them. I'm not sure if we're going to need to, but it gives us a, a chance to introduce um, some chromatic effects into the puzzle. Um, so there we go, they're all different digits. Now the other thing I noticed, and it does hold, it does hold because of the one in that, in that, in that box down there, is that there must be a massive restriction on ones in this puzzle, because a 13 cage in four cells has to have a one in it. And the way to work that out quickly is to try and not put a one in it. So if you if you go two, three, four, and five, which would be the least we could put in with no one, two, three, four, and five add up to fourteen. So there is definitely a one in every single two by two cage in the puzzle. And that feels like it's probably going to put a one in the middle of the grid, but I'm not sure whether that's true. Let's just uh, just highlight. So there are ones in all of those cages. Yes, okay, so the, yeah, yeah, there's a simple way of looking at that then. Where is the one in column five? Or and that must be by symmetry, it must be the same in row five. And obviously, if there's a one in there and a one in there, there can't be a one in here as well. And the, the way to understand that is to realize that there's only one one in row one of this Sudoku and there's only one one in row two of this Sudoku. So in these two rows combined, there are exactly two ones. And, but there's a one in there and there's a one in there. So if you did put a one in here, that would be a third one in just two rows. And that's going to break the puzzle. The same logic applies there, the same logic applies there, and the same logic applies there. So the central digit, we are away. If this was fog of war, we, we could write one in confidently. Let's get rid of the orange now and think on what this means. Now. Mm, I'm, I'm not sure whether I should say this, but the, ne the next thing that's occurring to me is set theory. And that this isn't quite the Fistimafel ring, is it? But there, I'm sure that there are, there are sets that we can... 
let me I'm just going to take a look at this um, if you don't mind so what is set theory well it, it's it's equating odd things in the grid with one another so let's just have a actually what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to <laughs> draw some lines in and then we will think about whether this this is going to reveal anything um, actually that's annoying this cage not having a total makes this I, I'll just explain what I'm doing so in the red cells you can see I've highlighted four columns of the Sudoku in red now although I don't know how the digits are going to be disposed within the red cells I do know in total exactly what digits are in the red cells there must be four sets of the digits one to nine. So in red altogether, there will be four digit ones, four digit twos, etc., all the way through to four digit nines. Now in the light green cells, I've highlighted four complete rows of the Sudoku. So, so again, I don't know how the digits are disposed within light green, but I do know exactly what the composition is, and it's exactly the same as red. So ab initio, red and green contain the same things. Now, if I was to remove this digit from the red set, and the green set, boom, like that. What can we say about what remains in red and what remains in green? Well, it must be the same digits because it was the same digits before I removed the same digit from both sets. And I can do this to all of these bicolored cells, bichromatic cells, there you go. And we end up here. Then what we could start doing is canceling out um, you know, we could we could take all of those cages, for example. There are three thirteen cages and three green cages. Three thirteen green cages cancel all those out. So now I don't know what the composition is of the the, the the digits within those thirteen cages. So I can't I can't now say at this point that the digits are the same within red and green, but I can say that they sum to the same totals. Now imagine if we did know that this was a 13 cage as well, then I could cancel these two out and I would be left with a weird little cross in the grid that ha where these two, well those four cells have to add up to the same as those, this isn't doing anything, is it? <laughs> it's not doing anything, that's what I would have been left with. So if I did know the sum of that, or indeed if I knew that was a great big mighty total or a great big minimally total, that might help me deduce some things. Sorry, I think we've just gone on a fool's errand actually. I'm going to I'm going to not not do set, at least not that set. Um These black dots see each other is the next thing I'm seeing. You can't put right, you can't put four and eight on a black dot in a 13 cage because four and eight add up to 12 and the other two digits would have to be a one and a zero and zero is not a valid Sudoku digit. So these digits are from one, two, four, three and six and those are different. Um, Hmm, hang on a minute. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure actually. Next thing I'm thinking about, I'm sorry, my thoughts are flitting around here. I'm not doing very well. Um, I can see that, I can see that because each 13 cage has a one in it, some of these black dots are going to be one two pairs and i'm just wondering if that's going to cause some sort of contradiction um what do i mean by that well i obviously i don't know where the one is in where the ones are in these 13 cages but but we can divide each 13 cage into dominoes we can look at this 13 cage the one is either on the right side or it's on the left side. But wherever I put it, that's going to chain around the grid. So for example, if we said, if we said that the one was in red here, 
in this 13 cage, then the one in this 13 cage is going to be there. But then in this 13 cage, the one is here. So you sort of you sort of go round the grid, taking always the the opposite the opposite domino. So so the ones would be in these cells, and that would give us a one-two pair uh, on this on this dot which would mean these squares have to add up to 10 without using 6. So that would be a 3, 7 pair. Because it couldn't be 1, 9 or 2, 8 if we had a 1, 2 pair on the black dot. Um, the alternative, of course, is that the, the ones go in the other dominoes. Let's just have a quick look at that. What colour shall I use to shall I use I didn't like that green colour before. I might use grey. Oh no, that looks too similar to an even digit. Um Oh Bobbins, I don't know what to use. Orange? Could use orange. Okay, we'll use orange. Um Oh no! I thought I thought I'd broken it, but no. Of course, that's <laughs> orange. That is not the orange domino. If that's a one-two, then what we're saying is that this couldn't be. We then if the, yeah, that's quite interesting. If that's a one-two, so i.e., if the one is in orange, then the one is in orange here, but it couldn't be in that square because that would be a two and it would clash. So actually. If this is a one-two pair, we would know there was a one here, a one here. <laughs> that just dies a death. <laughs> okay. Um, I wonder if what we're meant to do somehow is to shade or, or colour the 13 cages according to... There are three ways of making 13. I think it's only three in four cells in Sudoku. You can have a 1-2 with a 3-7 pair. You can have a 1-2 with a 4-6 pair. And you can have a 1 with a 3-4-5 triple. So there are only three ways of doing it. And I wonder if there's some way we can... Oh, oh, right. Wait a minute. I have just I have just thought of something that's very important. I'm not sure how to use it yet. Right, when we when we just went through those options, we said one two with three seven, one two with four six. Yeah, oh, this is obvious. Okay, I didn't see this at all. Um, do I leave my shading in? Every, oh, this is going to be enormously... Pa oh, this is beautiful. Right, this is absolutely beautiful and very straightforward. Okay, what I should have appreciated and didn't is can you... I, I, no, I saw immediately I couldn't put 4-8 on a black dot. Can you put 3-6 on a black dot in a 13 cage? And the answer, strangely, is no, because the other two digits would have to add up to four and be a one three pair. And that would repeat the three in the box. So that means the only black dot digits that you can put in 13 cages in this puzzle are from one, two and four, which means that there must always be a two on all of these black dots. And that is doing some things I can see immediately. And some things we may have to think about. So the first thing I'm seeing that's the consequence of that. So let's actually let's actually formalize what we've just said, which is that there is a two in each of these dominoes. And then we can do a count of twos in columns one and two. Look now, how many twos are we expecting in those two columns? Well, there'll be one in each column, so there are two twos, but we know that there are two twos in those those squares there. So there can't be twos in the in in the even cells, which means two is in one of these squares. Right, and now I know what this 13 cage is. That's beautiful. That 13 cage now, there's a two in one of these squares, and there's a two on this domino, so there is no two in this 13 cage. 
which means it must be 1, 3, 4 and 5. <laughs> that does nothing. That's extraordinary. Does it really do nothing? Um, hmm. Oh dear. <laughs> That's a bit of a shame. Okay, hang on, look, there's a 2 there looking at this 2, so we know that that's a 2. That's going to be important, isn't it? So this is a 2. What's that doing? Um, oh dear, oh dear, I'm still, I'm still having trouble. Um, one of these is a 2. My shading is about 1s, isn't it? Shading is about ones. So if ah ah, that's it. Right, golly, that's actually that's actually not that straightforward. You can't put one in orange. I just oh, I don't think you can anyway. Because if one is in orange, one is in orange there. But then this black dot contains two four. And 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, which means the other digit that has to accompany the 1 in this domino is 6 to make 13. And 6 is not allowed to be there. So this is massive, because that means that orange, orange everywhere, has no 1 in it. <laughs> which means that, right, this domino is now a 2-4 pair, and there is a 1. So this, this is 1-6, because it's got to... It's got to add up to 13, and there's no 6 in here. Uh, which means, which, right, so everywhere, um, everywhere in the puzzle, so the same thing is true here, 1 is in red. So this is, so this is a 1, 6 pair, because we've got a, we've got a 2, 4 on the black dot. Um, which means that we've got a 2, 4 looking at this square. <laughs> Which means that one is here now by Sudoku of all things. We can we do better than this? Don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure yet. Do we know? Right. We know one is on this domino, so this has got to be a one-two pair. Oh, look, so this is a 3-7 pair, because it can't be a 4-6 pair. So this is 3-7, that's not 3. Now, can we keep this going? That's not 4, look. It sees, it sees a 4 in this domino. So this is 6 or 8. There's definitely a 1 in this domino. I think, I, I think what I should do is formalise all of these 1s to the extent that I can. And let's just mull this over now and see if this this yields any any additional deductions. Um, we know. Well, what do we know actually? Two. Two is yeah. Two is a bit restricted in this box. I think there's a one-two pair here. So 2 has got to be in one of those, which means 2 is not there. And therefore, where is 2 in our even digits? It, apparently it has to be there, which is great. Or is it? Um, there is now a 4 in one of those two squares. That's a 2. That Aha, this is good. This is good. That's a 2. That's a 4. And I've just said there's a 4 in one of those two. Well, it's not there anymore. So this is a 4 down here. I've seen one thing that does. Um, oh, no, I've seen another thing that does. Right. 1, 2 and 4 here. This domino adds up to 10. Well, it's got to now be 3, 7 because it can't be 4, 6 anymore. It could never be 2, 8 or 1, 9. So this is a 3. Not a three, sorry, um, or a four actually by Sudoku. That's a five, that's a four, that's a three. Good grief. Oh, please. I would just be absolutely delighted if this now 
gives up. I saw something else. What, what else did I say? Yes, I saw I had a 6-8 pair in this column. So that's got to be a 1. That's got to be a 6. That's got to be a 1. That's got to be a 2. That's got to be a 2. That's got to be a 4. Um, okay. Can we do something with that? Yes, yeah, so I can place 4 in this box just by our old friend Sudoku. It's got to go here. Yeah, and that's quite nice because now I can ask where four goes in box one look. And this little four on the diagonal pinches that cell away. So I've actually got to put it in this cage, which means that's a four by Sudoku, which means that's a four by Sudoku because I've got the four on the diagonal ruling out this one, which means that's a four by Sudoku. I've, got, I've still got to think in my brain, uh, my poor little brain about what it means to have fours in these 13 cages. Does that mean they all have to be? No, they could be, This could still be one, three, four, five, couldn't they? So then they don't have to be one, two, four, six, although this one can't have two in it, look. So this one is one, three, four, five. So it's one, three, five into the balancing cells. And somehow or other, that's not resolved. You rotten puzzle. <laughs> um, okay, well let's try, let's try and do something. That there's got to be a two in, in this cage because of the circled clue, and that seems to have to be a, on this side of it now. Is that good? Yeah, that is good. So now look at the negative diagonal and ask where two goes because it's not in any of whoopsie it's not in these cells so it's got to be in one of those two and that one sees that one so it's got to be here which means that there's a two in one of these squares which means there is no two in this in this cage so this is also I have a fear I might have broken this now have I got no, I worried that I was going to have too many of 1, 3 and 5 in the same columns here, but it doesn't seem to break. Uh, that's not a 1. So we've got 1, 3, 5 triples in both of these columns. Um, I've, oh no, I was going to say I've not put 2 on the positive diagonal, but I most certainly have, so I can't do anything with that. What about... <laughs> that doesn't add up to 13. So stop looking at it, Simon, and wondering wondering if you can write 1, 2, 3, 7 into it. You certainly can't. It would be quite funny. It would be quite funny if this was a 13 cage. Mm. 6 has got to be in one of those two squares. In um, So 6 is in one of these two squares. Ah, no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can use that. What about... Okay, what about 6 and 7 in column 3? They seem to have to go into those squares. Which... Uh, what's that doing? So, I mean, one of the things I'm seeing there is because these are different, that square now can't be 6 or 7. But I don't... I'm not sure I can do any better than that. What about... What are these squares? 7, 8 and 9 in box 3. But we do, I don't think we know anything really. Oh, that's not 7 actually. I found a 3, 7 pair here. But we really don't know much about the high digits at all in the puzzle generally. What about two? Oh, yeah. Yes. What about two in this box? Where does it go? We can do that. That's got to be there, apparently. So what are those two squares? They are eight and nine to complete that column. So what's this digit? That's a five to complete the box, which means that... No, I was about to say something that was wrong because we don't know what this digit is yet. So 3, 7 and 9 have to live in column 2. But 
I don't think we know the order, do we? Oh, that's got to be an even. Oh, oh that's lovely. <laughs> that's really strange as well. Look, this cell can't be 2, 4. It doesn't seem to be able to be 6 because of a pencil mark. So that's got to be 8 being even and all. Right, and that's quite nice because now I've got a 5, 8 pair in box 6 by Sudoku. Uh, I don't know these. Again, the 3s and the 7s are, are foiling me. Um, so what, how do we do this then? This column maybe? We don't know what this adds up to though, so I'm not sure it is this column, but we'll, we'll check it out anyway. 2, 3, 7 and 9. So that has to be 3, 7 or 9 really. Oh, maybe it's the diagonal actually. Let's let's put in two, three, seven, and nine down here. That's definitely not a two because of this two. This is unrestricted, I think. No, it's not. This is not right. It's not going. I can't see how to do it. Um, what's the trick here? I don't know. I don't know. It's It's got me. It's going to be... What could it be? <laughs> um, I don't know. Sorry, I'm not seeing it, uh, as you've no doubt noticed. Oh, no, it's not. I wondered if it was going to be... No, it's not going to be that. I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to say what I was about to say then because it was just embarrassing. Oh, what about three and five, maybe, on this positive diagonal because of this... That square can't be three or five. That might not be such a bad question. Yes, okay. Is that really... Is that really true? Sorry for taking a long time to think about this, but I think I think that is true, isn't it? Three and five on the positive diagonal, I think, have to go into exactly those two squares. Now, bizarrely, oh no, I can do it because I've got a three in one of those. So that has to be five, I want to say, which seems to give me a six in box five via our pencil marking. And oh, oh you know what this is going to do? You know what this is going to do? It's going to allow me to put a three here. And what's that going to mean? We haven't had one of these. A maverick is about to fly past. And I'm going to do this. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Proving its position. That's a three. That's a seven now. We haven't had one of those for a few days. That's that's very joyous. Um, right, so that's got to be a three now. This becomes a one five pair, which means we get a three up here, which means we can... We can do some tidying up at the top of the grid. Um, right, so we've now got all the low digits on the positive diagonal. So that square is a 7 or a 9. Now, I'm sure we know which one of those it is. Uh, well, I'm not sure actually. I can't see how to tell. Um, oh, I've got a 7-9 pair in this column. 3 comes out of this square. I see, and this is a high number that's not six or seven, so that's eight or nine. So five, eight, and nine into this column. Five, eight, nine. Do we know anything about those numbers? No, <laughs> I don't think we do. Um, bother. Okay, let's try this column then, where we need, we also need no, we don't need 5, 7, and 9. We need 7, 9, and something. Is it 6? Yeah, so 6, 7, 9 in this column. Now, can we do... Can we do anything with that? 6, right, 6 in this box is on the diagonal. So that can't be a six. Six feels like it's restricted down here, but it might not be restricted in a way we can actually use. I think six is in one of these two cells. 
Um, it's the same on this diagonal. Look, six is in one of these two. So I know we've already got the six in column one, so we can't do anything there. All right, well, let's have a look at these squares. These are from three, seven, and nine. Okay, so it looks like... No, I still don't think we can do it, can we? Three is not in that that cell for what that's worth. Oh, bother. I can't see how to finish it. <laughs> um, it could be... Oh, there we go. There we go. Where does six go in this box? And uh, the answer is I don't know, but it's in one of those squares. And that looks at that square, which makes that a seven, which makes that a nine. That gives me a 5-8 pair here, which gives me a 9 at the bottom, a 7 here, a 6 here, an 8 here. And now we're going to have got all of these even, these chromatic even squares that we started with. We've also got, we've got an 8 coming out of the corner up there. Um, so we're left with a 7-9 pair. Does this, does this re resolution do anything? That's no longer a 7. That's no longer a 9. That's no longer a six. Yeah, there's a three, seven, nine triple out of absolutely nowhere. So this is a five, eight pair in this row. So that's got to be five. That's got to be eight. Which surely does something. Um, probably. <laughs> um, there's a seven here. So these two squares haven't got seven in. So they're a three, nine pair, which means... The, this is a 5 or an 8 in the corner. But I don't think it's resolved. I might be wrong, but I'm not seeing how we can do that. Okay. Um, what about then? A oh, 9 here is giving me a 7 there. So 7. That gives me the 9 on the positive diagonal. That does the 9 and the 8. The 8 and the 5. The 3, the 7... That gives me a 9 here, which gives me a 7 here, which gives me a 6 here. The way this is sort of all unwinding is really cool. 3 and 7 go into these two squares, which means uh, now that square now sees 7 and 9, and therefore we can get rid of the, or we can place the 3 in it. This 9 gives us a 2 and a 7 down here. Do we know what this adds up to yet? No, it's now on a total of 10, so it depends what the last digit is. Um... And this box needs 5, 6, and 8. I'm sure this is resolved somehow, but I can't see how to do it quickly, so I'm going to do it slowly. 5, 6, and 8. The diagonal... No. <laughs> Alright, let's try those digits then. They're an 8, 9 pair. Now we can do that. 8, 9. So the, oh, we are now going to learn the total. This is a one, uh, sorry, it's a one six pair. So the total of this was actually 16. So it was different. It was different to all the others. And these have got to be two and nine, and that's resolved. Nine and two. Um, so the top squares here have got to be three and seven. We can write those in. So somehow, some way, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to resolve this this something's going on in this row yeah this six has done something six one one five five eight eight nine so that eight sees the six down here the five that becomes an eight that becomes a six and that should be a nine and that's doing the six and the one and the one and the five and all of a sudden We've found the puzzle. 40 minutes, 140 people have solved that in six days. Well, they have had a treat. That was really clever. Collider. Why is it called Collider? Is it... Hmm. It might look like... I don't know whether this looks like the Hadron Collider somehow. Or it might be because... What was the break-in? The break-in was around noticing that... If I put a 1 here, yeah, that was it. So it was the black dots. The black dots all have to contain 1, 2, or 4. And if you put a 1 there, you get a 1 there with a 2, 4 here, and the 6 breaks. It's, ah, it's really clever. It's very clever.
What a lovely idea. I'm going to be, I'm going to be interested on this one. I think there will be a very high standard deviation in terms of people's experiences of this. I think some people will get it done very quickly um, because they will spot immediately this black dot trick in a 13 cage, which I've never seen before. Um, but I think there will also be some slow times because if you don't notice that, you'll get lost in the lost in the weeds or the reeds like I did with the thinking about set theory and wondering what on earth's going on. It's a really clever puzzle, James. Again, fantastic work. Take a bow and let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.